Hey everyone, welcome to another episode from Ampro Engineering. This is the rug in my studio. And this, there it is. That is something I did. Yeah, I did this. Let's open it. I think it's pretty easy to see that it is a Traxxas. And if you know Traxxas model numbers, then the surprise has been spoiled for you. I personally don't keep a many model numbers um, in my head. Let's go ahead and just open that up here. Okay. And there it is. Oh, and it's open. Fantastic. It's supposed to be new in box. Let's see what's going on here. Uh, you see the tracks is seal. Oh, maybe it just came off. I think it just, I think it just peeled itself off. Well, I finally did it. I bought the unlimited desert racer. Uh, this is not something that I'm typically into, but I could not get over the appearance of this thing. Kind of like the tracks is Bronco. This thing just struck a chord for me and I've been looking at it for well since it came out and I finally pulled the trigger so I think we need to open well open the box a little more here there it is you know me I don't usually like unboxings but ooh. so it was pretty amusing because I seldom know how modern RCs work this is ginormous hold on a second Office isn't big enough. Okay. My goodness, that is huge. Right. Oh. Documentation here. I'm sure, more things that will confuse me. And let's pull the truck. This is just huge. Truck is out. I'm gonna keep that bag to store it in. And should be a radio. Don't see a radio. Maybe it's in there. Yes. And there is the radio. Hang on a second. So this already has the wireless module built in. They've added it. On my Bronco, I purchased it separately. So unlike the one on the Bronco, it doesn't have the multiple settings up here for the uh, differentials, nor does it have the setting here for the transmission. You can see where the plug has been pulled on the mold. There's a little outline for it. Not that that's really important, but yeah, there it is. Um, I wish I could tell you more about this. I know nothing about it, but let's compare its size to something a little more familiar. Well, that is the UDR. And this is a Hornet. So you can see they're about the same size. I'm just joking. It's much larger. It is much larger. I guess I better look at the manual here and see how to make that work. I'm going through some of the paperwork. I've got the quick start guide, which I think is gonna be pretty useful for me because if anybody recalls the video that I did on the Traxxas Bronco, you'll know how long it took me to even turn the dumb thing on. So I'm gonna have to go over this a little bit. The thing that I am familiar with is that radio because the Bronco does have it. So that should be pretty good. And what is this? What? Oh my God. What to do if your Traxxas model breaks. Okay. You see this whole, this whole line right here, to me, this is what's wrong with ready to run RC cars. You fix it. That's what you do when it breaks. You fix it. And this is just, oh, this is nonsense. I'm never going to use in here. We have... These are probably foams for the battery, Traxxas decals. I don't 
know what that is, but we'll have to look into that. And some hardware. Looks like one of these is probably going to need to pull off the wheel, which we're going to have to do. So let's go ahead and take this beast and put it on the bench. Oh, man. This thing is way too big. Well, I guess we'll just have to investigate things piece by piece. One area that I did want to start to modify is the front hub. I've heard that the hex hub adapter tends to strip out, so I did pick up some of these hot racing front discs. What is really neat about this is the fact that Traxxas did put the disc on it, which we saw on the hot racing ones. There's a little plastic caliper here, which they do make metal ones, but I'm not going to bother wasting my time with it because I can paint this up and make it look even better than the metal ones. Another area that I wasn't too keen on, if I can turn this around, oh, this is huge. There's a little rubber limiting strap right here. It's me messing with it right there. I've, I've been told that they stretch, so it, you know, it, it's, it looks kind of cheap. I'm not really a huge fan of it. So I also picked up these hot racing ones. Oops. I also picked up these hot racing units right here. And something that absolutely every single person has ever told me about Traxxas products is throw away the steering servos and get yourself a replacement. So I've done that. This is a Savox SV1270TG. This is not a waterproof servo. This is simply water resistant, but this is never gonna see water or moisture in its entire life. So I really don't care. That is what we've gotten. Uh, there's another body that's already on order because I can't bear to drive something that's been pre-painted. So that's gonna go away. I've got the really cool little spare tire straps for this too, which is simply cosmetic, but it looks really nice. One of the cool things about this truck and one of the things I absolutely loved about it was the fact that it has all these little scale details. You've got the quart bottles of motor oil. You've got two batteries here. You've got a spare drive shaft. And from what I can tell, I believe this is a real spare drive shaft. So that is amazing attention to detail. It does have a full cockpit with two drivers. And it's a little on the glossy side, but uh, that's, that's not a big deal. So that'll get fully detailed. This one did come with the light kit, which is fantastic. Unfortunately, it doesn't have headlights. I mean, it does. That's a headlight. That's a spotlight. But to me, I need actual headlights. And I know that these trucks don't actually have headlights. But the beauty is, this is just a toy and I can do whatever I want. So we'll be 3D printing some neat headlights to apply to this body, as well as some taillights. Now the irony of course is that these are going to be way more functional than these, but it's all about cosmetics for me on this truck. I'll have to do some detailing to all these other little bits here. I also have some upgraded trailing arms coming in because I've also been told that these are notoriously weak. And uh, when this thing does go out, I'm not gonna have my time wasted by a cracked or broken trailing arm. We'll remedy that situation before it ever becomes one. Speaking of drive shafts, this will be getting replaced by an MIP unit. I can't imagine that this one is particularly bad. It looks quite well made, but if MIP sells a product for one of my vehicles, especially a drive shaft or axle, I am going to blindly purchase it. So that'll be going away in favor of the MIP unit. And as I am looking under this truck, I see some details like this series of braces that retains the side of the body. Just really, really well thought out. I really like that. All the little plates that fill in the gaps on the roll cage. The completely flat belly right here. The differential housing, it's definitely molded plastic. It's one of those pieces where a metal housing would just look so much better. But this would be a very, very costly part to upgrade in. I don't know. I, I'm a pretty light driver on my car, so I doubt that'll be an issue in mine. But it just is one of those things where... Boy, I'd love to put a nice metal one in there. This brace here, how it's designed, if I can put my hand behind it, you can see how it's actually done. The reason why it has this diagonal brace here at the rear is for, for durability. This is bracing the entire axle tube so that in the event of an impact, it is going to help prevent this tube from flexing. So this is a very, very nice touch. These A-arms, I was quite surprised to see them like this. They do make replacement ones that are not completely closed in or, or flat like this. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not sure what the nomenclature for these types of A-arms are. It's interesting because they, they look, I don't know what it is. I, I don't like 
the look of them, although I believe that its overall design is going to be probably fairly helpful for deflecting stones and rocks and all those uh, all those bad things. I've been also told that these are very, very weak. On this truck, I don't know if they'll be replaced, but I know that you can actually get upgraded Traxxas ones, as well as upgraded ones from quite a number of companies in both plastic as well as aluminum. Well, folks, that is it for this kind of early dive into the Traxxas UDR for me. I said there's a lot I don't know about this truck. I am sure there's quite a few out there that are very well versed in it, so please, you know, let me know some of your experience, some of your stories about the truck. Stay tuned for some upgrades to this truck as well as some Ampro products. Again, anything that I plan on making for this truck is going to be purely cosmetic because I think in terms of the size of this thing here, not to mention how well Traxxas has overall engineered it, I can't imagine that there's anything that I could do that would um, make this thing perform any better than it probably already does. So anyway, folks, thank you all so much for watching and please stay tuned on this, my largest RC car ever purchased. We'll see you soon.